You've chosen to install Ubuntu using a CD-ROM. If you would like to install Ubuntu using a different method, click this annotation now to go to the selection screen in part 1 of this video series. If you would like more information on Ubuntu and its system requirements, click this annotation now. We're going to begin by downloading the ISO file that we're going to burn to a CD. So head over to Ubuntu's website at ubuntu.com and then select the download tab at the top. Then click anywhere around download and install. And then make sure you've got the latest version selected. If you're watching this video a long time after I uploaded it, there may be a more recent version than 11.04. So make sure you have the latest version selected. And you've then got to decide whether you want to install the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. Now some of you may be wondering how you decide which version is best for you. Well, there are several things to consider. As of 2008, most new consumer desktop PCs that are sold contain processors from AMD or Intel, which are capable of operating in 32-bit and 64-bit modes. In order to check that your processor has the support for 64-bit, then presuming that you're running Windows at the moment, download, install and run CPU-Z. So if you go to this URL, which is in the description box below, click the link on the side here to download the latest version of CPU-Z. Then click the big download now button in the center. The download will then begin. It's only 3.6 megabytes in size, so it shouldn't take too long. Once it's finished, run the file. Press the run button if any security warnings appear. And then press the next button when the setup window appears. Put a dot in the radio button to accept the agreement. The default is fine, feel free to change it if you wish. Next button, next, next, install. Uncheck this box and then click finish. Now if you go to your desktop, we'll see the shortcut for CPU-Z here, so I'm going to run the program now. Now the way to tell if your processor has support for 64-bit is to look in the box next to instructions. Now if you have an AMD processor, as you can see I have Intel, if you have an AMD processor, uh, AMD 64 will be in this box here if you have support for 64-bit. And if you have an Intel processor, in this box will be EM64T. So if you have either AMD 64 or EM64T in this box, it means that your processor has support for 64-bit. So if your processor doesn't have 64-bit support, then you should use the 32-bit version of Ubuntu. However, if you do have a processor that has 64-bit support, then you have the option to use the 64-bit version. Early 64-bit adopters had some incompatibility problems, most noticeably Java and Flash. However, most issues have now been resolved. So if your processor has 64-bit support, I would recommend installing the 64-bit version of Ubuntu to utilize the full capacity of your hardware. So, if we go back to the Ubuntu download page now, choose either 32-bit or 64-bit with this information in mind, and then press this big Start Download button just here. The download will automatically begin. It's 698 megabytes in size, so it will take quite a while. So I'll just skip that along in this video. Okay, so the ISO files are finished downloading now. If you chose to download the 32-bit version, it will look like this. And if you chose to download the 64-bit version, it will look like this. Now I've decided to move the files to the desktop so that they're easy to locate for the purposes of this video. You can also move them to the desktop if you want so that you can follow the steps exactly as shown in this video, but you haven't got to. So once you've downloaded one of the ISO files, 32-bit or 64-bit, head over to this URL, infrarecorder.org, and then click this Downloads link to the right just here. And then if you have a 32-bit version of Windows, click this link. If you have a 64-bit version of Windows, click this link. So I'm going to click the 64-bit. Save the file. It's 4 megabytes in size. It should be done quickly. And then run the file. If a security warning appears, press the Run button. Then click Next. Put a check in the box next to I accept the terms in the license agreement. 
hit next, next again, and install. And then click finish. Okay, so with that program installed, run the program. It should be here if you've just installed it. Or you can simply search for info recorder. And then click the right image button in the center here. And now we've got to locate the ISO file that you've downloaded. So I saved it to the desktop. So I'm going to click desktop here. And then I'm going to choose a 64-bit version myself because that's what I want to use on my computer. So wherever you saved it, locate it, double click it to open it. And then make sure you've got your CD drive selected. So whichever CD drive you're going to use, if you have more than one, I'm going to choose E. Now at this point, place your blank CD into your CD drive. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, I've put that CD in now. This will be a good time to mention that your CD must be larger than 698 megabytes, because that's the size of the ISO file. So the standard size would be 700 megabytes for a blank CD. A 4.7 gigabyte CD will also work, however. If any auto dialogues appear when you put the CD in, simply close them. And then keeping all the default settings, simply click the OK button. It will then begin to burn the image, starting in 2, 1, and off it goes. So I'll just skip that along in this video. Okay, so it's now started to write the image to the disk. If you get an error message whilst doing this part of the video, it's probably because your CD isn't compatible with the ISO image that you're putting on, so try a different CD, a different type of CD, and see if that works, although most CD types should work. Okay, so it's about to finish now. There we go. As we can see, it says status, operation completed. It says the disk was successfully closed, and your blank CD, or no longer blank, should now be ejected from your CD drive. So grab that CD and you now have a CD which we can use to install Ubuntu. Please click the annotation below to move on to the last video in the series which will show you how to run your removable media at boot up and complete the Ubuntu installation process.